Uh, hi, so I don't want to look at my phone too much because I am driving, but uh, where I'm driving is to Blue Guitar headquarters to um, we'll do pretty much the same thing I did when I was there last month, except now with a camera and microphones, so you can also um, be a part of it. I've just arrived at Blue Guitar, so um, yeah, we're gonna I'm gonna go inside now. I'm gonna grab my camera and shit, and then I'm gonna go inside, and we're gonna have some fun. I hope I'm in frame. Uh, I've, I've made it here alive, um, and here's here's the owner. <laughs> <laughs> the owner, yeah. Hey, hi guys. I'm Tom Splug from Blue Guitar. So this is my real name, <laughs> um, and that's the first thing that you should know. You cannot um, register a blue guitar. <laughs> you can only register blue guitar because I'm blue. <laughs> right. Uh, all right. So I've. I've only come to this corner to uh, introduce uh, him and uh, to, you know start the video off, but I, we, we can we can you know get going now uh, because this is not this is not the interesting corner. This is just a black top and a um, and well here we have some products. Okay, this is where the juice is. So um, this is the famous amp one. In this case, it's the Mercury edition, which can be seen on that little 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 sign here under tiny. the fan, yeah, tiny. Um, and this is the Iridium edition. That's the one I have at home. Yeah, that's the one that is tight and modern, you know. Um, so that's me and that's you. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, that's pretty much, yeah, that's, uh, I, I use this one at home. I haven't turned on a real amp since I've had that one at home. It's, uh, or, you know, a big, big amp since I've had that one. Yeah. It is a real amp, that's why yeah, I like it. it. Yeah. And people, uh, it's, it's still, a lot of people don't believe it. And, you know, I get asked, what's my favorite amp? And then I go, well, if it's not this one, and I go, it's my old vintage Marshall, 1965. And then I switch it on, and I, I really like it. In my switching system, in my, in my video studio or my studio, I go A, B, and I think, well, this sounds maybe exactly the same or not that far off in I have more features I have a reverb I everything but I'm not missing anything of my real amps we will be in that studio in a bit uh, that that is we, we are going there this is just this is the the office the headquarters there's proof yeah. <laughs> you would, wouldn't have one of those at home see this is my desk here uh, I'm, I'm living in the the middle of a chaos which is, uh, well, this is our remote one. We are working on a future remote. There's my MX folder for this. There's a timeline. There's things about... You've mentioned MX. We, we, now, we now must go back here. <laughs> because, because now you have to explain to me what this is. Because people have not seen this yet. I mean, a few, a few pictures maybe, but not, this isn't a product yet. So yeah, it is. explain yourself. It is a prototype in kind of the final stage. So um, we have been working on this actually for five years. Now we have a little displays for each of the controls, for what we call the X controls that come active when you dial in effects uh, like reverb or delay. Depending on what you choose, you get that. You know, there's, uh, you know, the, the, the inc incremental whatever dial. Uh, push dial for the digital stuff, but mainly this is uh, the concept is that this thing is mostly analog and it's it is actually analog. That's the, the big thing because these amps they are not modeling amps. They are real amps just using tiny little components and we managed to get the same sound and the same feel like for the old boys uh, into 1.2 kilobytes. And then we go here and have maybe pedal effects. I'm going into my delay, mod delay, and press here, and I go for my reflex, and then suddenly I have little guys coming in here. There's boosts and drives and, you know, a kind of, and there's like two presets on each, no, the purple one and the blue one. That is, hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm going to I gotta get the tripod again. Yeah, so the reason I'm gonna grab this one because that's the one that I that I actually use. I, I've I've used this I used this briefly for like maybe a total of six minutes uh, last time I was here off camera. So this is the one I have at home. And it, uh, again, since I've had this one, <laughs> I have not turned on a real amp head. Uh, they're still in the background of my videos because 
uh, yeah, a wall full of this is not uh, the nicest decoration. But this sounds as good, if not better. Uh, and it just takes up less space. I have that big, uh, big rock board that Warwick sent me. If I taped that on it, I could just go and play a gig, and that would just that'd be the entire rig. I'd plug straight into the PA. For a moment, I couldn't believe uh, that these are not digital, because anything that I've heard be this versatile, it's not just about the sound quality, it's just about the fact that it, this can do anything. This can sound like <laughs> any amp that you have at home. Yeah. That just kind of, that, that, that gives you the, impression that it's probably just another quad cortex, but it's not because I don't like the quad cortex, but I like this. <laughs> well, this is a real amp and it's all analog. That's, that's the big thing. Uh, it's analog from input to output, so no conversion, nothing digital in the signal path. The one only exception is there is a reverb on it and the reverb, of course, it's not an old school tank. Yeah, no. Yeah. The, the, the whole tank would be as big <laughs> as the amp is. So yeah, so, so uh, but all the rest is all analog. I know, I know Uli John Roth uses it. That, that's, a, yeah. that's the thing I have to show back there is uh, one of, I, I'm going It's his personal amp, actually. Yeah, I, yeah that, I'm going to walk back over there with the camera now because this, that is, that is Uli John Roth's Black Star Artisan. Yeah. And I'm, I, I don't know, that, that just made me uh, lose it a bit last time I was here because that's that's very cool. I've oh, how heavy it is <laughs> Let's okay. Oh Jesus Christ mm. Okay, okay, so you know that's a bit of an amp. Yes, I, I think I know why he switched over to <laughs> He he has five he bought five amp ones five of the um, The silver ones, you know the, the yeah. like the mercury and uh, he uses um, When he plays with his three guitar players, so he gives two to the other guys and the other ones he uses himself because he, he I mean, he's the boss, he uses two. Right. And um, he, one day he asked if I can get exactly this sound into an M1. So Uli is the only man on the planet that has a black star inside an M1. <laughs> it's a unique modification we have. Oh, oh so you've, okay. So it, it's one, there's only one. So oh, so if he ever sold that, that would be just yeah, it's in, invaluable, all right. But he actually plays the standard version most of the time. Do we start in the confusing room or else? Yes. Okay, well, this is the, the chaos room. Yeah, and by oh, the way, is... yeah, the Julian, Julian, very important man. Um, our technician, one of a few technicians, but this is kind of in-house technician all day, all night. We do night shifts. Let me show you. This is the inside of the Amp X. Um, as we can see, there's some weird stuff going on, which is tweaks. Here is our nice little nanotube, that sub-miniature tube that is part of our concept. By the way, this is a DSP, 16 core DSP. So we actually do have lots of reverbs, lots of delays oh, nice. and many options. Um, but all these little guys here, these are all the analog components, all this, these guys. And they kind of do what traditional amp circuitries are doing. Just a lot smaller. <laughs> yeah, just a lot smaller. I actually, I can show you here, you know, how, how, how small Oh yeah, is. I saw this last time. You could, yeah. you could breathe one of these in and yeah. not notice it. That is... Yeah, it's like, okay, let's go here. And this is one of those. And can you see that guy? <laughs> Maybe the camera doesn't get it. Oh, it's, it's, not, it's not focusing on it. That's how small it is. Yeah. That's, that's proof. Yeah, okay. So these we put on the PCBs. This is kind of a printed circuit board, PCB. Of course, it goes through very many different phases. This is an old one. This is revision 1B, no prototype 21, but we are already on E, A, B, C, D, E. And uh, yeah, so that that's what's going on here. I have tons more stuff at home. Um, so here we work a little bit cleaner um, right. So don't bring in ten things at once because otherwise it's got going to be a total mess. Home is is where we are headed next, which is that's that's not going to be boring. This this is I, I'm going to add chapters to this video because this will have um, bored some of you half to death. We're probably going to head uh, to his place where all the coolness is. Okay, so we've made it to the fun place. Uh, it, it is yes, yeah, almost like this is a set meant for making videos because this looks uh, much better than. Where office. we were before, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Almost like that was an office and this is a video set. Um, right off the bat, this is all really cool. These are all vintage, very nice. You won't hear these though, <laughs> because you'll be hearing this. 
yeah. uh, when we play. I can I can switch them on and I can A B them. That's what my setup. Oh yeah, is that's the we, we we need to do that. Yeah, <laughs> you need to you need to just proof the blue guitar amps can make these obsolete. That is that's a good idea. I don't know what to start with because this is like um this is like Candyland, as a child. It's just. So much cool shit. I got my two amps here. One is uh, the Iridium, one is the Mercury. Um, I can simply have my switcher here. So that's this guy and that's the other guy. So, and then if I want to, I can switch on one of these old school Marshalls. Um, so. Oh, that is, that is some tone. Yeah, that, that's a vintage tone. Okay. Watch, in, in like five seconds he's gonna prank me and say, no, that was actually the amp one, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. 1965 and this is today. You get it, okay. <laughs> Yeah, no, if, if he, um, if he AB'd that with my, even with my eyes open, I don't have to close them, I can't tell. As long as the lights are on on both of them, I don't know which one is, uh, which one is which. Yeah. Well, this also, is my job. <laughs> yeah, right. Also, that, that guitar that he's, there's going to be a video about that guitar. There's, I'll leave that for, you know, in a few weeks so I can yeah. stretch the content from this day very thin. But there's, there's going to be a video about this guitar. It's a 19... 61, yeah. 61 Strat, so that is... I f keep forgetting, whose signature model is this? Because it's someone's. Alex, Alex Bayroth, Alex uh, Primal Fear, you know. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. cool. You wanna yeah, because it, it, it reminds me of like a George Lynch signature, but also I think every ESP signature guitar looks the f***ing same. So, you know, it, it is what it is. This is very scalloped, very, very scalloped. If you look at it, this the top range is scalloped and it's normal over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's, it's scalloped from the ninth fret up, ninth, which is, yeah. I, have, I have my Kramer that I, I had scalloped from the 12th up, which yeah. is, yeah, having the second octave scalloped is very nice. This is, these, these are very deep. Ingbe would like these. Yeah. <laughs> this has it down to the truss rod. <laughs> Boost is too much. That is this, that's this tiny box yeah. making these sounds, just, just to remind you of that. Because yeah. I, I tend to forget when I have my back turned to the amps and I'm just playing. I, I think like I have my JCM 800 plugged in. No, it's, 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 it's just a tiny little yeah. aluminum box yeah. that is just, it's just so full of sound, man. I don't know. Again, I haven't turned on um, any, <laughs> I haven't turned on any real amp, any big amp. I keep saying real, you know what I mean. It's not because it, <laughs> it, it, yeah. call it old school. Yeah, because it, it doesn't seem real, but it, yeah. it, it is. What are these switches? Um, this is a, I think the one is a kill switch. I can be Tom Morello, finally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool guitar. This is not what the video is about. I keep getting distracted because this is all just so cool. But that's, I mean, I guess that's, that is what the video is about, is this is all cool and I want to show it to, to people because you need to see it. If I wasn't here at Blue Guitar where there are these things, um, then this would be the center of attention. I'd spend eight hours talking about how cool these amps are, but that's, I don't know, it seems pointless when I'm sitting in front of this and it sounds exactly the same when you AB it. So I don't, I don't know. That's the fun thing. That's what inspired me to actually make this video is just the fact that, yes, <laughs> I have cool shit at home, he does too. Yeah. Uh, we, we both do, and guitars still count, they do. Absolutely. You'll never be able to, to replace a guitar. People have tried, um, like, 
was it bias effects too but it tries you can like pay for individual guitars and then it, you can try you can make a strat sound like a uh, gibson v and it sounds like shit. it really does first of all, it, add, it adds latency and everything guitars will will count always yeah. so that's people have asked me like you think pickup um the pickup industry is going to go bankrupt not in a million years because if people do switch to like a quad cortex or even something like this, just something that has every tone they need in it, yeah. they're still going to want to keep buying because you can't, you don't have to keep buying amps, you can just buy this. So <laughs> what do you keep buying? You keep buying guitars and you keep yeah, putting different pickups, pickups in yeah. them. That's just kind of what it, I mean, I do that too. I do that with Fishman's yeah. and I do that with uh, noiseless single coils and everything. Not because I need to, because most um, of my pickup related problems can be solved by just tweaking the gain knob. But it's it's just fun, you know. Gear acquisition is is a <laughs> hobby, and it is yeah, it's a hobby in itself. Yeah.